All right, fans, we're back. As many of you probably know by now, Campbell County High School has a new football coach. His name is Justin Price. Um, Justin, actually, I invited him on the show, but he was in a wedding today. He said he would come on soon and, and talk football and some other things with us. But um, we're going we're to talk a little bit about Justin Price, Matt Price, Cougar football in general here for a few minutes. Of course, um, Justin comes in replacing Jerry Minot. Um, he just, you know, he was there. He was basically an interim coach. He was here for three months. Left us kind of in turmoil. Um, apparently, the school board <coughs> offered Justin what he wanted this time. And apparently, put it in writing because he's here now. Reminds me of Alabama a few years ago when they had the uh, whole Mike Price coming right. in the spring. I, I argue with Alabama fans to this day who they try to claim he was never the coach at Alabama. I remember, I remember the Mike Price. <laughs> it, it, it just it, it was a rough time for Cougar football. It was very unfair to the kids. Um, they were lucky to even get a spring practice. Had um, you know. Interim coach Mays and Johnny Bruce and Mike Miller and Brent Peel and Cody Parker and some others. Josh James hadn't have stepped up. You know, we would be in really rough shape. Now, um, with Justin, he and his brother Matt, who's the assistant head coach, even though, like Luke said, those two terms seem mutually exclusive. They do. You know, I, I would probably call it the associate head coach. Here or there. They come from Anderson County. They were the offensive and defensive coordinators. Right. Larry Kerr hired them right out of college to be their his offensive and defensive coordinator. That's a pretty big deal. You know, Larry Kerr, you love him or hate him, and I know a lot of people that have feelings towards him either way, always played to win. He would not have picked Matt and Justin Price to run his offense and defense if he didn't think he could help them win. Of course, when Coach Kerr retired, or you know, at least stepped down from Anderson County, of course, he and Elwood Pennington now reunited at Lake City Middle School. But uh, David Gillum kept Matt and Justin on as offensive and defensive coordinators. And I'll tell you right there, I've known Davey for a long time. If he didn't think they could do the job, they would not have been there. You know, it's... The talent's there for those two as coaches. Uh, they had good teams, great offenses. You know, apparently, Justin said he likes to throw the ball a lot. So, uh, um, Tanner Williams set state records this year for attempts, completions, and yardage. Of course, you know, and he's not even going to college to play football. He's going. He's going on a baseball scholarship. But Tanner was a good quarterback. Now we've got Tuffy Shoops, who, from what I understand. Is a pretty outstanding quarterback. I remember when he played for LaFollette. You know, he was he was a fine young talent then. They say he really shined at throwing the ball in the blue and orange game. Um, I'm not sure who all the receivers are up there right now. I I got to be honest. I've not been to a Campbell County game in a while. I'm just hoping that uh, maybe they can drum up some excitement and get kids to come out and play. You know, I, you know build the roster up. I think they can. Um, they're, like I said, they're exciting young coaches. They have a really good system. I'm going to say this about Matt and Justin Price. This is something I had, a conversation I had with one of their former teammates the other night. You know, most coaches teach PE, health, some sort of social science. Matt and Justin Price are smart fellows. You know what they teach? Math. In fact, Campbell County is probably the only school in the area whose head football and head boys basketball coach are both math teachers. Yeah, maybe that'll help them draw up some plays, get the kids to understand the plays better. Yeah, well, they're, they're smart fellas. They, I know they're dedicated. I, I coached them, and that's not to say that, you know, I coached their position, because I was a line coach. But, uh, you know, I coached a team that featured, you know, Justin Price as the quarterback at Jacksboro. Probably the best team that ever played at Jacksboro Middle School. And he was a leader then. 
You know, he was everything you wanted in a quarterback. He's, you know, he was a general. And, you know, he, he said at the press conference that they were going all in on this one. And I'll say this, and Luke was at the press conference with me. There was a good turnout. There was a deep, there's a really good turnout. I was um, kind of, I was really happy to see that. I was also really happy. We had a lot of the he had a lot of his the football players. A lot of Cougar football players were there for the press conference. Right. That I mean that tells me you know there's there's some interest because you know as soon as the minded incident happened. I really expected that program to start bleeding players to Anderson County, Cumberland Gap, Scott County, you know, wherever players go. You know, we'll still see what happens towards the fall as far as the roster goes. Hopefully he gets it under control, gets everybody out, gets people, you know, get excited about the game, you know, gets fans in the seats, you know, throws the ball around a lot. You know, I'm not sure how good the team will be because, frankly, you're never sure with Campbell County. It's it really is hard to say, but and it, it's not a question of dedication by the ones that are playing. It's just you know they need more players. You know, as a as a they're a five A team when it comes to the playoffs. You know, they're three A in that stupid Z plan. But you know, as a five A team, you've got to have a good, strong. Preferably deep roster. Yeah, I mean, they've been filling skeleton crews up there, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're filling 40 players and the other team's filling 75, you're at a big disadvantage right off the bat. You know, my, my brief coaching team here at Campbell County, we went to Oak Ridge. We probably had about 45 to 50 players on the team, which is a huge team for Campbell County. I mean, huge. You look across the field, and it and the coaches box, the players box at the time, it's twenty five to twenty five now. It was from the thirty to thirty yard line. And they were lined, the play, Oak Ridge players lined up two deep. Uh, Oak Ridge fields giant teams, you know. Um, same thing happened when we went to Farragut. In fact, Farragut had a lot of their JV dress because I mean that, that's what they thought about Campbell County. We're gonna have a good half of their varsity and let our JV play some. For a lot of years, that's what a lot of people thought about Campbell County. You know, and didn't, were able to do, to be honest. Still regret not uh, breaking into their field house and stealing that autograph Bill Bates picture. <laughs> well, you know, maybe we could be able to go back there someday. Hey, you never know. We can give some total coverage to Farragut. I know where it's at. i got a screwdriver. It's probably a bad idea, especially right. now. Did I just say that on, on <laughs> camera? You did. Um, you know, but again, back to Matt and Justin, you know, they, they come, they, they, you know, they had some good years of football here. You know, Justin didn't really want to talk about it at the press conference. Their senior year, they went to Anderson County. Right. Now, you know, I, I know there's, there's some wounds there. And I wrote about it this week, you know, it's time to start healing those wounds. You know, Justin... I mean, honestly, if he didn't want to be here to coach this team, he wouldn't be here. I mean, he literally sitting on the offensive coordinator's job at um, Anderson County, you know, when David Gillen was ready to give it up, that pretty much would have made him the shoe-in for the job. You know, it's... The, uh, the Price boys, they, they are they're Camel Countyans. I mean, they were... A year or two behind me in school. Right. You, you, they, they played for your uncle Ronnie Lasley at right. Jack's World. Right. And, and then, of course, later their eighth grade year was your I'm talking about that I coached them. Right. So, you know that they they have the history for for a, a, to create a stable Campbell County uh, sports environment. They've they've co were coached by some just phenomenal. Coaches in the in the Campbell County history. I mean, right. I mean, they, they they even played on a little league team that was coached by the Mosiers. That was actually back when Campbell County Little League still had, you know, a lot going for it. From what I understand, in the Little League's defense too, Brent Lester and Stephen Pierce have basically taken over the Little League and are doing good things with it. In fact, I'm looking to actually have Brent on the show here fairly soon, but. I mean, 
<clears throat> those guys came all up through, and their senior year, right before the season, Ken Kessler and leaves Campbell County, the guy they've had as a coach their first three years here. They weren't sure who the coach was going to be. This was, you know, this was, you know, going back to, you know, how politics work here. And they ended up at Anderson County. They, yeah, they, you know, they weren't the only people to leave. And they went down there. They, you know, they got coached by a really good staff down there, and Larry Kerr and Tony Lambert. Right. You know, they they played college ball. You know, they... <clears throat> I want to say they initially went to ETSU and wound up having to leave, or were going to go to ETSU and wound up not going, because obviously ETSU no longer has a football program. Right. They finished up their career at Maryville College. You know, I mean, it's... It's a smaller school, but they got that college playing experience, and they run and they run that spread offense. And my, that that school has a great football heritage, right? I mean, there's you know there've been a lot of people that played and coached in Campbell County that's gone to Maryville College over the years. And in fact, your uncle yeah um, went to Maryville College, and yeah, he came back to be a pretty darn good coach both at Jasper Middle School and Jellico High School. Yes, and you know that you know. You don't have to go, obviously, to UT or wherever to be a great football coach. I mean, it helps to have that big-time experience, but any college experience is good. Now, this offense they run, it's wide open. You know, it's it's running gun, for lack of a better term. You know, it's... We'll see if they uh, have the receivers and line play to... Uh, that's, the, that's the real trick. You know, to run this. You know, if it's... True run and gun, you don't. Sometimes you you play it in a way you don't have to have that great of an offensive line because you're just hitting really hot reads really quickly. Right, and Tuffy's a good quarterback. You know, of course, you've got Ethan coming up as quarterback. Um, Kane Peel's a quarterback. Ethan Miller has played quarterback. There's there's some people there that can. Of course, now I'll, I'll tell you right now, Ethan Miller's such a great athlete. They could put him. At tailback or at receiver, and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna do well wherever. You know, and, you know, as far as the young core, there's a lot from both Jacksboro and Lafayette, but hopefully that we'll see some progress for the football team. And on the defense side of the ball, we actually don't know what might have in store. He was asked at the press conference, and he chose to say, "Well, nothing." I'll go ahead and tell you what I think he'll run. I think he'll run a 4-4, maybe a 4-3. Pretty much what he ran at Anderson County. It's what he it's what he grew up playing. And hopefully we'll have that's another thing, hopefully we'll have the um defensive talent to do that. You know, we lost a great defensive lineman in Keenan Evans. Ironically, his most important job may become, you know, keeping players from going to Anderson County. That's true. And it's true. Yeah. I mean, if any if anybody knows how to talk about, it, I mean, it's those guys. You know, I'm I'm not even trying to beat a dead horse here. It's just the way it is. Right. And like I said, hopefully next week Justin will be on the show. Like I said, he had a wedding today, and I can certainly understand that. Most people actually go to weddings they're in. I don't know if it's Sean Jesse's, but um, you know, that's neither here nor there. I didn't like the wife. Also, um, hopefully. We'll get to talk to him about seeing about who else he's going to have on his staff. Right, because right now it's just him, Matt, and Josh James. He said he was going to be bringing some more people in. There was one guy in particular I hope he's going to bring in, and I'm not going to mention any names because I don't know. But, fans, we are rapidly running out of time for this week's edition of Sports Chat. So we're going to get out of here. Um, hopefully next week we'll have Justin Price with us. And in the immortal words of Macho Man Randy Savage, to the video scope!